All right, so welcome back to part two, short hair. So what we're going to be dealing with here are these, got that one, that one, stretch elevated, and this one right here. And I got two of the same. Okay. All right, so generally speaking, what we talked about in long hair was layering. And layering removes weight. That's the primary thing that layering does. Are you doing that one too? Yes. Okay. okay. But <clears throat> layering is defined as 90 degrees and above as far as cutting is concerned. So you're bringing it straight out and anywhere above <coughs> that, you're dealing with layering and you're removing weight. That's the long hair from earlier this morning. So when you go below 90 degrees, you're building weight. So anywhere between 0 and 90 degrees, you're building weight. So that's what it says. 1 to 89 degrees is graduation. 90 to 180 degrees is layering. The difference is graduation builds weight. Layering removes weight. Always. No exceptions to the rule. Okay? So there are... The primary way that you start building weight is this one right here. And that is called a stationary guide. In other words, if I have the head shape here and I'm pulling the hair, let's say that down here I want to create um, a style that kind of does something like this here. All right, and then I want to come out like this. And I want to do a hairstyle, something like that. So what I've got here is this hair has got to fall down. So we're doing, we're pulling all this hair out like this. And that's basically uniform layering down in through here. But when we get to this point right here, We've cut this, then we pick that up to here, and we cut that, and then we take this section and we cut to here, and we pick this up and we cut to here, and we pick this up and cut to here. That's a traveling guide, right? You take some of the part that you just cut, and you bring it up as a guideline to the next piece, and then you take that piece and you bring it up to here, and you cut that, and then you bring a little bit of this up to this part, and then you cut that, and then you take a little bit of this and you cut to there. And so you have these... these partings that are kind of like that, right? <coughs> so the, this, you're traveling along, trying to create some semblance of uniformity as far as the layers are concerned. But there's a point where you just stop, and all the hair starts coming down to that same point, and that's your stationary guide. The minute you create a stationary guide, you start building weight. So that's the easiest way to describe building weight, is that you just stop traveling with your guide. And whether that be on the side here, or whether or not you create an A-line like this, or whether or not, however you want to do it, you're basically finding a point and, and building up some weight. And like with this haircut, I often will do this. And then at this point, I go, okay, there's enough weight right here. I'm okay with that. I'll take this and bring it up. And then I can start doing a traveling guide up here again, right? And then so I can create this weight and then go off into something layered. So, right, all I've done is just stop for a moment between here and here. I've stopped, built my weight, and then I continue with, the, with my layering and a traveling guide. In essence, that is what we call elevated graduation. Right? We call it elevated graduation because what we're doing is we're elevating this hair, which we put here, we're elevating it out to a point, stopping for the stationary guide and building the weight and then moving forward or not. You know, if this were, um, say, an A-line cut or something like that, you know, we'd be bringing all of this down roughly the same point. Okay? This builds a stacked effect. effect. 
So by and large, if you want the hair to stack up, you're going to, you're going to use elevated graduation. If you want a very, if you want your graduation to be, or your weight to build up rather low and kind of come out, you don't, you don't, you start your elevation close to the head. If you want to have a softer stack, where it's more like, more like that per se, right? You just pick up a little farther away, and you elevate further out from the head before you stop and bring everything to that. So the farther away from the head you are, the softer your stack is going to be. Up until the point when you're at 89 degrees and you're just barely off and you just, you know, by that time it's looking rather rounded like that. And it has just that little bit of stack there to it. It's pretty much a layer, right? But even at 89 degrees, if you pull that hair down, this is this right here is called a line in the hair when you do this. And that would be your cut marks that you see in the hair. Right? Because what you would have done is you would pull this down like that, and so this is the hair that you're cutting. You cut it there, and then you move it up here, and then you pull that out, and then you pick up too big of a section, and you cut it there, and when this falls, it falls, and it looks like that, and you get a little ledge. So obviously if you want to layer it, you need to do narrower sections. So this brings me into the difference between long hair and short hair primarily. I want to show your partings. So if I have long hair and I take a section of hair from here to here, and I drag it way up here like this because I have long hair. The distance between here and here is very minute when it comes to here. Right? So this hair doesn't can travel quite a ways, and there's very little. So this is going to have really, really, really soft lines like that that you're not even going to notice. So if I take a little wider section here and bring that up like this, well, then I'm going to have a little deeper trough there, and then let's say another deeper trough right there. And that comes from how, how much of a parting I'm taking here. Now, on short hair, if I take this hair and I bring that into that, oh my God, look at the difference. Huge. That, that's huge, right? So when this comes undone, I'm going to have a trough that looks like this, and then a trough that looks like that, and you know, so on and so forth, all the way around. So it's very important that on the shorter the hair, the smaller your partings have to be. <clears throat> Otherwise, you're going to have deep troughs all over your haircut. So short hair takes more time because you have to take more sections or you've got to um, compensate in some way, shape, or form. Like, for instance, if you do this, then you would want to do it on the other side so that um, you know, you're cross-checking. So at one point, my scissors are going to go across the head like this, and then I'm going to send them across like that and double, and then take these so little tips off. you're cutting twice off, as right? much. You're cutting twice as much. So either way, you've got to take up twice as many sections, right? right? right. So you might as well just take smaller sections and just get it done right. You can see that in men's haircuts when you do like finger length or whatever. You can see the dips in it and you always have to cross check. Always. Yep. Yeah. Or take smaller sections. Right? Because what you're, you're just encountering the fact that you've just pulled your fingers together like that and the shorter the hair, the more evident that is. Right? The longer the hair, mm -hmm. you, know, you don't see it so much. So regardless of what you do, of the type of haircut that you're going to do, this has a dramatic effect. It also has an effect when you're bringing the hair down and you have a stationary guide in through here. You'd be surprised if you take a big wide section, let's say you go from here to here, and you pull all that hair down, right? You actually will have a fairly thick amount of hair right there. And then you cut that. Believe it or not, when that comes up, you get this kind of effect. And then when it's, when it's all dried, when the hair comes down like this and it's dried, you'll see your cut marks down there. 
it isn't super clean. So that's why it's super important when you're on shorter hair to take small fine sections so that you have less of this issue going on. If you, there are some ways to get around it. You can take some blending shears, for instance, and you can, you know, get roughly the weight in there, and then go through with your blending shears and, you know, blend that stuff out. You can, <coughs> you can see, you can take, you do point cutting, right? That's real popular. You just go in there, and instead of doing this, you cut that so that that's not a straight line, that it's kind of jagged. But on a clean haircut, it looks frizzy. So. I'm not a big fan of point cutting. I don't. I will often go in and texturize deeper, right? And and texturize those ends out after the fact to try to give me a little bit of a, a, a notched effect that goes deeper into the hair, and that will soften that edge up. So there's ways of getting to fix it once you've done it. But truthfully, if you just take the time and you do a small section. And do another small section, and then another small section, and another small section, and you keep your your consistency. The trick is always hold the hair at the same spot, right? And, and that that's what takes the practice. Not kind of like <coughs> taking this one and doing it here, and then you're an eighth of an inch out further here, and that's where you do the next section, and then you come back and you put that one back to there, and then you move up again over here. That sort of doesn't create a really beautiful look. So I like to use my fingers, and I'll pull the hair out, and I'll, and I'll put my fingers down and try and keep it like at the ear, or find some. Um, somebody wants me. Like a marker. Um, you know, um, <laughs> new phone. Okay, so if you use your fingers and a reference point on the head, like oftentimes I'll use the bottom of the ear, the top of the ear, I'll grab some spot and I'll come down, hit that spot, bring it out one or two fingers or whatever I, my reference point is, and then I cut to that so that I have a memory of where that exact length is. Okay? And that just takes pure practice that you just have to know it and feel it in your fingers. And um, If you take small sections, you can see it. If you're, if you're observant, you know exactly where that is because, because it shifts, right? Because when, when, I'm going to blow this up and we're going to see it really big, right? So when I bring that hair up and I've got my guide, I can see that this hair does something like that if it's in the wrong place. It should look should look blunt, right? And that's, that's, should save me the most on those haircuts if it doesn't look blunt, I don't cut it. Right. Yeah. If it doesn't look blunt, if you don't get that blunt, then this next piece right here is in the wrong place. Because this is either higher up or further down. Because it's either looking like this or it's looking like this. Because you've shifted slightly down or slightly up. Okay, so be observant when you're doing So if you're starting to get that, what do you do? Start over? Yeah. In a, in a Vidal Sassoon technical way, when haircuts used to take three hours, you just don't. Today, you just go through and you do the you either you do the blending or you do the, the thinning shears or whatever you do and you, you blend this all out so that this is all looks more like the same. So it's it looks more like fun. that. But the initial cut should be blunt. It's, it's otherwise it's, you never the or you, you never have to do that, about. right? Correct. Well, you've already <clears throat> cut, and when it's already in your hand, should look blunt. Yeah, the, with the uh, new section sticking out, and then you're like, okay, there's right. a blunt right here, cut that out. Correct. It shouldn't look like this. The old section shouldn't look. Correct. Like or slow or the other way. Or diffused or anything like that. It shouldn't look not blunt, right? Because then you're either up, down, or somewhere. You're you're not pulling it out as consistently as you. So pull your guide one. Pull your guide. Practice pulling However the hair. However you hold your finger, that should. Correct. Practice making sure pulling. that your hair, when you pull the hair out, it's always 90 degrees. Practice so that in your sleep, when you pull that hair out, it's straight out whether you're holding it horizontally or holding it vertically. The trick is consistency. And if you practice 
making sure that your sections, I mean your partings, are being pulled out at exactly 90 degrees, all your haircuts will become more consistent. All right, so that's elevated graduation. That creates the stacked effect. Now, if, if we want to create a bevel, in other words, we want to create an effect that looks like that versus the stacked, right? That's, that's the difference, right? This, this is called stretch graduation. That's what creates this effect right there. Most common right here at the hairline. That's where we want to see this bevel. We want to see it right here in the bangs. Right? You want to see that, that look right there. Those are the most, two most common places. We want, to, we want to sometimes see it around the ear. We want to see it like, um, say, on a, on a wedge or not so much an A-line, but like for sure on a wedge. It's now, a modified bob and stuff. What's that? A modified bob. Yeah. How about yeah. Sure. The, the stretch graduation is really beautiful. It's just this, this beautiful, it looks like an undercut, but it's not really an undercut because all this hair is cut like that, but it looks beautifully undercut when it's done right. This comes from stretching the hair. So what we're talking about here is if I pull this hair down, we're going to pretend that this head moved forward. I'm going to pull this hair down, and we're going to call this, um, here, we're going to call this one inch. And I have a 10% stretch in the hair. This one inch is going to stretch one tenth of an inch. Hardly anything at all, right? So, so I'm going to pull it down, I'm going to cut it, and when it bounces back to its natural shape, it's going to be nine tenths of an inch instead of a full inch. Right. If I take this all this hair up here and I move up here to five inches and I bring all that down in through here and I cut it at exactly the same point, but I've stretched it, pulled it down, fine teeth of the comb, pull it, hold it down, right? I stretch it 10%. This is now one half inch. So everything in between this point and this point, every single dot in between is some 10% of this original thing. So what's going to happen is this, when it dries and falls, this is going to be roughly one half inch shorter than this point right here. But because the head shape does this nice and round, so does this. Because it's following this part of the head shape. And thus you're going to get a beautiful beveled shape that's quite reminiscent of what the head shape itself is. But it's going to be half inch shorter and one tenth of an inch shorter. Now, some Asian clients, some um, thick people that have thick hair, some people's hair just stretches a lot, right? Well, they might have 20%. I have clients that I have to cut, I can't stretch it at all, and I have to cut it dry because even the slightest amount of stretch when it's wet causes the hair to bounce up. So I want to have That's a That's real curly hair? No, straight hair. Really? Yes. Straight hair. So I have clients I want to cut a beautiful bob in, right? And instead of having this kind of a line like that, I get that, right? And it's just, and my weight builds up way over here, kind of a thing, instead of down here, purely because of the stretch. That's June, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, careful when you're doing stretch elevation. It looks beautiful if a person has an average amount of stretch. But if you have a person that's standing in your, or sitting in your chair and goes, my hair just shrinks up so much. Well, guess what? They're telling you that their hair stretches and has a lot of elasticity. And so at that point, you just got to go, whoa, okay, be careful. And don't stretch the hair unless you want that beautiful bevel. And it's intentional. But listen to your clients. They will tell you that their hair stretches. They will say, whenever they cut my bangs, my bangs are always on my, in my forehead. And you look at their bangs and there's no calic there. Right, that causes it to bounce, and you're just going, hmm, okay. Right? Well, clearly, their hair stretches so much that when the hairdresser pulls it down, cuts it off right here, it boing, boing. Right? So that's stretch elevation. It's beautiful when you can do it right and when it's done intentionally, and it's our nightmare when we pull it too tight and it bounces and we just go, oh my. How did that happen? <laughs> so you're bringing each section down past the 
previous section? Um, no. Bl stationary guide. That's like a blunt one line cut. Two lines. Because you're stretching yeah. it. It's gonna Absolutely correct. You're, you're putting more tension. You're putting more tension. You're putting lots you of tension on here. Using the fine teeth of your comb, pulling it down, stretching it as much as you can get it to stretch, and cut it off at all, a the, same with, at all the same length. Oh, stationary okay. guide, wherever your stationary guide is. I'm only using as an example the nape. But in the bangs, we often do it, and sometimes we'll do it to build up like a, an A line or something like that. You'll see you can pull it down nice and tight in through here and then drop that A line down. And then when it's all done, it's just got a beautiful little bevel to it, but it doesn't stack. It bevels. Okay? So, stationary guide, stretch, pay attention to how much stretch you get. Um, listen to your clients, they know best about that. Last type is the kind of is the graduation that we talked about with the long layering is all around the cut, which is your shifted graduation. This gives you the most beautiful short hair. Um, no, shifted. Shifted. You would cut Maria's hair like this, and then it would just comb back. Correct. Uh, how was her last name? Back. Yes. Right. And the front, where he, the way he would bring it, and then it would yeah, just when, do when that. When she wasn't wearing it so layered, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you pull it down to here. Back in the day. Right. I, I often use, I love the, four, when I'm doing it on short hair, I love 45 degrees and 45 degrees. So I pull it straight off that part, just straight out like that. And then... Um, Depending on where, I, t I take my guide here, right? So if the hair is this long, there's the ear, right? And I'm going to take my guide, mm, let's say that I do this, okay? I like all the occipital bone, that hair comes down to here. So I'll take this hair, bring it up to here, all right? So that does this, and I'll bring that out to here, and I'll bring all of it out like that. That's all shifted we're talking about? That's shifted graduation. When this is all said and done, this drops and it creates that. You can see it. You can see how I created it on this right here, right? Um, so it creates this. This is the Dorothy Hamill haircut. Okay, that was right? what I was going to ask. Is that the Dorothy Hamill? Yeah. Okay. Sort of. Sort Dorothy of. Hamill is actually stretch graduation. Really? Uh, yeah. When I talked to Trevor Sorby, I didn't really talk to him so much, but when he was. Talking. Do it talking. <laughs> when I was watching the video. Yes. No. <laughs> I, I, I saw him in person, and we were in. He was talking about doing um, this haircut, and how it was a bit the Dorothy Hamill, and it was a mistake. He wanted to create a one length haircut, and he stretched it, cut it all off at one length, and it created this beautiful bevel. And then you brush it back, and it goes whoosh, just beautiful, right? So. You want, if you're going to do that here, let's say you're going to create that here, and you want that bevel to be like that. All right. I don't know if I got this right as far as the eye is concerned, but there we go. Okay, so you want that. Well, that's this pretty much, except you're pulling it at a steeper, um, well, not so much a steeper. You, can, you might more like this, right? So you're pulling it so it's down. stretched and elevated? Yeah, you're, you're, and shifted. And shifted. Right? Wow. You're stretching it and shifting right. it, and that, that lifts and gives you this crescent shape. By and large, all I'm trying to get across here is that when you shift the graduation outside of the natural line, fall line of the hair, you will create always a crescent-shaped result. Right. If you do it in this direction, and you're moving the hair, and you're creating an A-line, and you sh take this hair and you pull it off over here, and you shift it out that direction, you will get, Long in the front. You will, and you will get this, this softness and this layering right here. You won't have the solid edge that you have right here in the nape. It'll look beautiful. It'll have this really nice, solid weight line right there, right? And then as that weight line travels towards the front, you get this soft edge. So then you dry the hair, and then you've got to go back, and you've got to cut that straight line in there. So you pull it down. Right? But you usually do it when it's dry so that it doesn't have any stretch attached to it. But Would you, you basically. Cut dry? But you. But you're the Dorothy Hamill haircut? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. no, no, no. 
You need to move on. Yeah. <laughs> this is we're talking about the A line. She's looking up pictures of Dorothy Hamlin now. Yeah, your classic A line cut that um, Vidal Sassoon made popular, right? Which is everything. This this whole line. There's an exact amount of graduation that goes like that, right? So all across the whole line. It's exactly the same. That's elevated graduation, which means that when you're pulling the hair down. This is my second grade hair test. <laughs> it's the, oh. Yeah. My mom loved that on us. The A line? <laughs> no, the Dorothy, Dorothy Hamill. Hamill. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's, 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 the bangs. It's, it's beautiful. And my mom has the Dorothy Hamill. I know, but I just that's, totally that's had a flashback. That's the first haircut I ever had. Right? I never had that's what I remember. My hair was like, it was the first time I'd well, gotten my hair professionally. Sorry, I got stuck on it because I always thought the, uh, you the Dorothy yet. Hamill was a wedge. It is. But I thought a wedge was an A line. I thought a wedge was stacked and went all the way around evenly with no long graduation. A wedge. Well, uh, stretch graduation gives you. Here. Stack. Number one, a Sorry. wedge goes from short to long in the back. Oh. Always. So does the Dorothy Hamill. I thought a wedge went from long in the back to no, short. No, that's your that's that's your A line cuts. Oh. Those are your bobs. Okay. So this is bob. Okay. And this is wedgie. Okay. So, so, so Dorothy Hamill has has a stretched wedge. She has. Yeah, the original one when she's back in the in the during the ice skating days yeah, yeah, that she yeah. made popular. I have two that, clients that have that haircut and I absolutely hate it. Sorry. Okay. Sorry for you. If if you have hair that stretches beautifully and has an, a, a fair amount of elasticity to it, all you have to do is pull it down, cut it one finger away, you know, elevate right. it one finger, stretch it down nice and tight, pull it all um, slightly shifted. Like that, yeah. right? And it'll just, you, you'll get that crescent shape from the shift, and you'll get a little bit extra lift to it, That's and true. it'll bevel, right? Because yeah, you stretched yeah, yeah. it. And then when you dry it, it just, it looks like that. It's just beautiful. No elevation? One or finger. One, one finger, finger only. One finger. Ish. You've walked me through that haircut. Okay, so what does the back look like? In That's what I was just about. The, the, the back, underneath, the back, are you cutting it vertically? The back or? looks like that. Okay. Yeah. It's complete. Okay. Yeah, there's, it's short through here. Right. And it starts it, usually. It's beautiful. It's, it's the occipital bone. Okay, my it comes off of the occipital back. bone, brings out like that, and then comes down. And then How comes, are you cutting uh, the nape? This are is, you doing this it is uniform layer. Yeah. yeah, but are you taking it vertically or horizontally? Whatever you like. It doesn't matter, right? Okay, from that point. I, I Scissor like over comb a lot of times because it's really short. You can clipper it. You can do it. Mm -hmm. My hands and my wrists right. don't allow me mm -hmm. to do a photo. Certain ones. Exactly. That's that is exactly correct. Well, so Look at that. What a, so what a, what issues, a beautiful. So just want to make sure. Oh. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Of that. And and the bevel. You can see the bevel in it. You see the bevel there versus a stacking effect to it, right? Mine was. Dorothy? Dorothy just fans yeah. out. Mine was like, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a beautiful example of, of just that. Just totally just fans out. Like Abs that. Exactly. But notice the bevel and not the stacking attached to it. All right? Remember? The bevel the soft. looks like that, the soft, right. versus the stack. Is stack. Where you have well, thank it. Thank gosh that haircut came out like that because if he was going for one length all over like this, that would have mm -hmm. been terribly ugly. Well, you know, sometimes you have this vision and you want to create it and you get it wrong and it creates something else beautiful. I mean, we've certainly done that a time or two. Um, anyway, so wedge, bob, pull the hair unless you intentionally want to create the, um, the crescent. Pull the hair down in the natural fall line of the hair. So it, when you're doing a bob. Okay, when you're doing a bob, the hair grows this direction, pull the hair down this direction, and cut to a horizontal plane, I mean a vertical plane, I'm sorry. So, you're going to take a vertical plane, straight piece of paper right down the middle of her head. You're going to pull all of this hair down in its natural fall line and you're going to elevate it to however soft or hard you want that edge to be. If you want a really soft bob, you want to elevate it out 
two, three fingers. That whole you, section. The whole, everything, this whole section gets elevated out, right? And you have a stationary guide that's a couple of fingers away from it, right? When that drops, this comes lower, and you get this nice little stacked effect right here that's a soft edge to the bob. You want a nice, hard, clean edged bob. You bring your fingers close, one finger elevation, right? And you pull it all down and you cut it just like this. So all of this comes down like this. All of this comes down like this. All the way to here. Do not include this. Okay? That means you're going to go right to the behind the ear. Right where the head starts to curve away, you're going you're gonna to go right to that point. And you can do that on both sides of the head. And then from behind, you've now got this section that goes pretty much from here to here. And you've got this hair that comes down and comes, it kind of looks like this. drawer but you get you get the idea right no. so so but this is then uncut what you're going to do is you're then going to pull this straight out from the back of the head and connect these two lines and you're going to pull all this stuff straight down so your bot you can start your bob right here here however you wherever the you same want same elevation you, you, know, you start it in the front I'm doing all my haircuts backwards I know what's going on <laughs> me too it's so much easier than starting it in the back. You can do it backwards. You, there's no reason you can't start in the back and work your way forward. But you just reverse this process. But you, you just to the point. You cut to the point where I'm here. Are you holding that up here. to the amount of fingers? One, you yeah, away? whatever you did here, you do that here. Yeah. Okay. So in essence, all of this hair has been pulled down in its natural fall line, and you'd be surprised that when you cut this in a straight line, when you drop it, it'll be. A perfect semicircle underneath there. Because of the circle? Because it, you're cutting a straight line on a curved surface. Yes. Yeah. When you let it go. Mm -hmm. And when you let it go, it drops beautiful. You may have some an extra extra little bit of weight right in through here, right? That because of the way the head shape is. And you'll have to come in afterwards when you cut this area here short. You'll have to make sure that you, you're clean in through there because there'll be a little bit of a um, a blend that you have to create right there, but by and large, this is the perfect way to do it. Now, you can do it the opposite way. You can take this, you can cut a straight line here and cut all this hair off right there so that you have all of that nice and cleanly cut. Then turn her head to the side, grab your guideline from here, pick your point here, and cut from there to there. You can do that. I just find it easier to go from here and work my way to the back. It's personal preference. Not to say that it's. Do you right find your guide in the back where you want to get it? To, like, do you take a snip? Nope. No. Nope. Yeah, this would make that perfect. Like, side. A B. <laughs> yeah. And you see the other side ones like locked down here. Right? This, this, here. This, this, <laughs> this, is, this is where I use the, head, the, the actual head shape. Okay? In other words, I usually will go from the, the bottom of the ear down and I, use, I lay my fingers on their jaw. Because they're generally speaking, their jaws are going to be proper, the same. So I put it right in a particular spot on their jaw, above their jaw, a finger below their jaw, something like that. And then that gives me my angle that goes back. Yeah. And it also gives me an exact point right through here. And then sometimes if you feel like you really need to, you can cut one side, get to this point over here, then take a small section from like just above the occipital bone here, drag it down over here, grab this piece, leave, and leave all this stuff out. And then just take a guideline and cut straight across. Then you move over to the other side of the head. And then do that. Find, find the other side of this, right? The one on the other side of the head, and come down to the side right here. Get so this side too, pull it down, measure. And measure, make sure you got it right. So you can do this whole thing by setting a, a guideline and then cut to your guideline. So how do you go 
How about putting this stuff down here that you haven't cut? I scissor over comb this stuff, clipper it, something. Just whatever. Just whatever. You don't, do you move the other part out of the way? What do you do? It's already going to be out of the way. You know, because I'll I can just pick all this stuff up. You know, you just pick, grab it, cut it all off. Um, whatever. Just, just don't cut into it. Just don't cut into it. Right. Thank so, you. I have to go. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Loser. So <clears throat> this creates that classic bob. Now you can alter that classic bob shape by shifting like we talked about. You can bring this over and you can start shifting that out like this, right? And then you can open this area up with your, because you know that you're going to have um, some version of a crescent shape and this is going to soften that front edge up. You can um, pull this out and you can layer this whole section right in through there. And if you do that, that's really shifting. Remember, you know, you can take all of this hair, right? And you bring it all back like that. You've seen that haircut, right? Yeah, you're going to have that. Huh? You'll have that. You'll have this this here, right? You'll, you'll just have this big crescent shape like that, right, when it comes down. Um, but you can also do this in such a way that, that you get fullness in here that has lift like this, right? Drops down into your bob shape, right? And then um, gets flatter towards the front or not because you can layer this out as well. You know, you can modify this in a bunch of different ways. You, if you pick it up and plateau it, you'll still have this, but now you, you'll have um, you'll have the height on the top, but you'll still have your classic bob weight line at the bottom of it, and then you can layer it and texturize it. There's so much you can do with this initial shape. You don't have to have the straight low elevation bob. Again, it's really about understanding that over-directing, which is what we've been taught, right? Over-direct over to this, over-direct. Anytime you over-direct, you're shifting and you're creating a crescent shape. Do it intentionally and it looks fabulous. Do it unintentionally and you have a bob that, that just swings wrong. You never get this clean line. You always are going to get some, you know, some version of that, right? Because then you have to go back when it's dry and you've got to kind of fix somehow this is wrong or whatever, you got to clean up underneath. There's always something you're fixing mm -hmm. because you've shifted somewhere where you shouldn't have shifted. Lots of people don't understand shifted graduation and this crescent thing. And used well, it's a beautiful tool. Used improperly, you're fixing your haircuts. And you're never getting that super clean, beautiful, classic bob appearance. So you have your classic bob and you have your design line all the way around. Then you can do whatever uh, to texturize and add volume. Add. If, you la if you layer it, you'll get volume through the top. You'll get you'll get more of a layered appearance to it because you you're that plateau layers. on the top. You Correct. Mean? You can plateau this on the top. I do it a lot. Plateau the top, and then you get this. This becomes a real a much softer line right here because you're starting to get that horseshoe shape taking effect. But you've cut the horseshoe shape off. Mm -hmm. Initially. Initially. I like that haircut. I like that haircut a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's it's there's so much to so do, you and you bring... do it in all these different lengths, and you know from anywhere from the shoulders on up. There's so much you can do with it. Trick is. Shift when you need to, understand what you're doing, otherwise pull it down in its natural fall line, elevate to the degree that you want it stacked. And use fine sections so that you don't have to go back and correct with blending shears or texturizing or stuff like that. Because this haircut looks best when it's just not heavily texturized. Down at the bottom. You can texturize the shit out of the top, right? So good. you have your design line at the bottom. You can take, you can elevate vertically. Elevate, yes. and sure, and and make this really soft. So instead of having a really strong line that looks like that, you can you can layer it a little bit longer, for instance, and then it kind of falls like that, right? A little softer. You can have so much of it that it comes down, and it actually creates mm -hmm. this. You know, it doesn't do this at all around the neck. You can actually create a rounder neckline like that. I like those too. I haven't done those in a long time. Mm -hmm. But they're neat though. Yeah, so you know, the, the creativity is limitless and you just should understand what you're doing so what you create is what you want to create 
and not what you just sort of happen to create. Mm -hmm. Right? You and know you do it from the start to right. the finish. And your haircuts will go Before super fast then too. Because you know what you're doing, you get it done, boom, it's done. You're not cutting it going, well, I thought I wanted this, and then you go in and you fix that, and you go, well, maybe I should do this, and, and you know, and, and you and you start treating your haircut like um, like clay instead yeah. of a, de a deliberate design that you're creating. And that's graduation. All right? Yeah. And we talked about uniform layering, we talked about building, you know, all the same thing applies. You could actually cut this super short right here, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can come out with increased layering like this to maintain the volume here and have this super spiky area, because back in the 80s we used to do this all the time. I'd cut this hair right here, finger length, <laughs> okay? And then I would... But I've seen it though. It's, right? It's, yeah. it's too cool. And then you increase layer out to the, out this way, like this, and then you, that keeps your volume down here. It's beautiful. And, you know, and right here, this, this all spikes up like that. And then increase layer out to the front, and she's got a beautiful thick bang. That's right. terrible. No, um, no, it looks really good because then. Who has that actually? <laughs> right now. No. Do you remember Mulan? Yeah. Mulan yeah. has that right now. She's been cutting that on herself yeah. lately. It's right. literally, it's maybe an inch long back here, and all this stuff in the front is still nice and long. It's layered into it. We're totally. 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 Today, yeah. th these days, you can do, I mean, oh God. That's eight yeah. long. Top. Yeah. Less. Half inch. And then increase it looks, there like this. Yeah, it looks it looks like this. Straight. I can't. Oh. Hear, I can't. I don't Here, watch 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 this can't beautiful haircut. Yeah, this is a beautiful. Watch haircut. this beautiful haircut I draw for you. That's right. Okay, so we're going to cut this this long here like that, right? And then we're going to like the mohawk, right? And then I'm gonna we're gonna actually do like a um, a plateau right here. Okay, so all that gets longer. So this this design line starts to do that, right? And then I'm going to bring it down like this, okay? And then I'm going to go from here, and I'm going to do increased layering up like this because I want to keep that length here, right there, that hair right there is going to go up to this length right here. The bang length is going to be even longer, right? So that I now have, um, all, when all this hair falls, it falls down like this and creates this beautiful section and then that pops up like that and this pops up like that and oh, wow. that nice. and then you do it asymmetrical do do one side really short shave it out and you know there's Terribly. think Edward scissor hands yeah <laughs> it's, it's actually really really cute to cut that super short and then if you properly do your increased layering your elevated graduation you know this is Wait, wasn't there, there wasn't there a name for that, like the kitty cat or something? No, I can't remember. But no, there was one. It was like the. Some of you were still. Okay. One of the old. Heidi, that should be your new haircut. Let's do it. I, I need to visualize it. Yeah. Let's do it. I've, I, I've done a lot of these haircuts in my. In I've my never. Yeah. In my not, not in the last five or six years, but before that. So. Anyway, it's about how you combine. And don't think of increased layering as only on long hair, right? Because it's not. This is an increased layer, and this is plateau. This, is, this could be um, uniform layering. This here is elevated graduation. This form down here is, is shifted graduation, maybe a little stretch involved. All in one. All in one haircut. Okay. Are you ready for your wedge? No. <laughs> you know what the, sp the, the spikies are? You know, I mean, really, what we're talking about is Jason's haircut there, right? Okay, he's got increased layering towards the front, short in the back. It, it isn't, granted, it's not so short, like spiky short here, but it's... And it's not so long. Right? This is your, this is your men's pompadour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all about how you put these haircuts together. All right, so we're going to talk about putting haircuts together really quick. Um, so the men's pompadour. Uh, is that haircut that I just showed you? All it is is just shorten it out, the front. and you get longer towards the front, and then they push it back forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, right? I look at it like that's if I if I blow dry my hair. Straight, Johnny, what's his name? Johnny. Like um, yeah. The cheese wedge. Johnny Bravo. It's Johnny Bravo. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, systematic. Systematic. Means doing it following a system. If you do your haircuts systematically, you will do them, you will be able to duplicate your haircut from one visit to the next and clients will think of you as being consistent and you don't have to try to talk your client into some new hairstyle every time they come in because somehow you weren't able to duplicate what you did the last time. So in order to be systematic, my thing is, one, do each haircut by itself. Do each haircut completely. All right. That means that if you're going to do one length, take all the hair, like, like this haircut right here, I'm going to break all the hair down and I'm going to cut it off all one length. Then I'm going to do her front, so I'm going to cut the bangs, I'm going to finish my bangs. Bangs are cut right here, right to the top, you all know how to part out the bangs, right? So where the, where the comb leaves the scalp, that's where the bangs are, right? So you part that out, you cut the bangs. Then you connect the, side, the bang with your sides. You, if you're going to do shifted, you shift it all however you want it to be. Do both sides, do the entire haircut. Then you decide that you want to have um, a stacked effect back here because it's a little bit shorter. So now I'm going to find my, um, my design line and I'm going to elevate and I'm going to bring everything down to elevate it here. Or I'm going to layer it out this way and do all my layering. Or I'm going to do a plateau. I'm going to do all my plateau. But whatever you decide, you just do one haircut, then you do the next, and you do the next, and you plan them out. For me, I like to do most of the time, not all of the time. I do my perimeter first, right? Then I do my front. Let's say perimeter length. That determines the overall length. Then I do the, the front bang area. Then I connect the two. Okay. And then I layer. And then I texturize. All right. Layer. Connect the two what? The, 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 the perimeter length in the back and the bang area. Oh. Okay. And then I layer or elevate. Wait, four was layer. Yeah. Oh. Layer or elevate. So wherever you're connecting the front to the to the back to the perimeter length, you you can do plateau that way. No, no. This is sh this is shifted graduation ninety percent of the time. Or not? Uh, you mean because perimeter I'm, I'm, to, I'm, I'm the, to the front? I'm connecting the bang, wherever my bang is, okay. to wherever my length is. Uh -huh. And I'm deciding how should that look. Should I leave a lot of hair in front of the shoulder? Do I want the hair to come off the shoulder? Do I want to have it really soft? Do I want to have it really full? What's, what's my... Okay. What do I want so to do? So you're shifting? Most of the time. Okay. But if you're doing like a Betty Page, then there's no shit. Then there's no blend. This is one length here, you see, and then there's the, you and then it's just straight bang off. Your connection is not. Right? It's disconnected. Yeah. Right. But that's all intentional. But by and large, that's this is generally how I approach most of my haircuts. Okay. Not, not all of them, but most of the time, probably about three quarters of the time, I approach them this way. Want things now. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So, in order to do this, when you're designing a haircut, when you're designing a haircut, the most you need to understand sections and subsections. For me, a haircut that I'm doing graduation on. I will generally cut into, I will take the parietal ridge and I will take the occipital bone and I basically do section one, two, and three. That's a nice drawing. I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> Enough practice, right? Um, so 
this is how I how I approach it. I will do these. These are my. This is my sectioning, and then you subsection them, and you part your and you do partings within your subsections. And I can do, for instance, I could do this horizontally. I could pick this up vertically, and then pick that up. You know, I can do whatever using this, right? Then I have another pattern that I like. For layers, I like parietal ridge and then down like this in the back. And then that. Okay, from, from the back, it looks Is that like. Is that a horseshoe back there? Yeah, from the back. Looks like this. That's what In the middle side, can you leave? Yeah. Okay, it's just like that. And then you can always section this off here like that too. But <clears throat> I like to take this section in the back right here, and I treat it exactly the same as I treat the top. So if I'm going to plateau this, I will plateau that section as well, going back out, straight out like that, for all intents and purposes. No, this, is straight, a, yeah. this is a straight line, and that's a straight line, and it's Let me take it, it literally, if I took my pen, it literally goes like this, mm -hmm. right? And then once, I, once that's cut, then I can take, you know, you, you're going to visualize that this is going to come down like that, right? So then you can take these sections and you can go around the head and connect them into here. You don't, you don't follow this straight around. So let's see if I can draw it here. Something like that. You see how this, this kind of comes around? My drawing isn't all that great, but it does that. And it, you can see I'm connecting this portion here into there. That portion gets connected into there. And it kind of comes around, and I'm connecting all of this line right here into this section. So I do this a lot for my... By pulling it straight out? or Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I would cut... On this so this haircut, layer. On this haircut, this is a layered haircut. This is a layered haircut pattern that I use. I cut, I, I part this off right around the occipital bone-ish, depending on how much. I determine how much weight I want to have down here. I find that point here, and I pick it up, and I cut a small section right there to there. That's why you don't cut past your finger on these haircuts. You're only taking sections that are this far, right? And then I will go all the way around the head right there, right? Because this is this has been left out because this is part of the fullness, right? So then I'm, I go through and I just cut all this around. And then I'll pull a parietal ridge out, cut this section, and then I'll connect here, and then I'll connect there. And then I work, away, work my way around. This here becomes a guideline, and this here becomes a guideline, a horizontal guideline, so that, that you can connect to. Sometimes, if you take the whole back of the head and you take this whole section right here as your guide and you cut from here all the way to the top in one like parting, you get lost. I get lost. I, I have a hard time. I, I, I end up cutting one side longer than the other and it just doesn't work well for me. Mm -hmm. So you can take this section right here and you can pull it out and you can see it. It'll be exactly the way you want it to be from the top. Mm -hmm. And then you cut straight down into it so that this is all nicely cut. And then above that, you do the same thing. Now you've got just your, like I showed you on the um, increased layered haircut, where we took the parietal ridge, we cut a clean line of the parietal <coughs> ridge, so that when I went into my next section, it was really easy to connect that section into the hair I hadn't cut. Same thing is true here. You have a nice clean line here, and you then finish this section, 
and then you work up into the next section, you finish that section, you've got nice clean areas that you can pick your reference points up and your guidelines, and, um, and then you do the same thing to the top, and you just do one section after the next, and you do them cleanly, and then your connecting lines are really easy to find. If you get sloppy, it's hard to find where your connecting lines are, and then you can't go around the head easily, and you're getting lost, and then you have to go back and fix, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so by having clean partings, clean sections, and taking them smaller, I find my work gets faster because I'm just cleaner about my work. Um, what else did I want to communicate? There's something else about this. I don't know. Anyway, so this is this is one pattern. Um, oh yeah, I remember what it was. Just recently, for 30 plus years now, I have been under the, under the impression that we should all do that the, your parting should follow the design line of the haircut. Have you heard that? Mm -hmm. I have too. And I've done this all my life, right? And I have come to the conclusion that I think I'm wrong. Okay? The reason I think I'm wrong is because if I'm elevating this, let's say that I'm doing a bob, and I'm, not, and, I'm, and I'm pulling this down, and I'm parting my hair like this, and I'm following my design line and my partings are, are parallel to one another, well, there's a section right there where this is not elevated as much as that. This will have a higher elevation than that will. And so when I'm cutting down here, I'm not cutting this. I'm going to elevate at the same distance, but I may not want to. I may want to have a low elevation from here down to, to here, all right? And then I may want to lift and elevate a little bit more because I want to create a little bit more of a stack, a little higher, uh, because I'm done with having the weight build up here. And then I may want to raise it. But if I cut like this, it's going to be weird. And I think I'm not right in doing that. So I've so you'll have more weight. I've decided that I that. that I'm cutting to gravity, to wherever the hair falls by gravity. So if the hair, if I want to cut a weight line down here that does this, well, you know what? This hair is going to reach here. That hair is going to reach there. And I know for a fact that if I lift this whatever elevation I want it to be lifted or shifted in any way that I want to, this is going to go in the same spot and it's going to be on the same plane as that as the rest of it. Otherwise, I'm kind of cutting into, let's, let's pretend that this is the graduation. I don't know. Let's say that that's my graduation that I want to create, right? But I'm cutting into that graduation like this with each consecutive parting and, and it's all not right. It's not going to fall in the right place. So lately I've been doing this and pulling it straight down, changing my parting, my part line, I mean my design line and my parting are not parallel anymore. And I'm getting good results with that. I consider it to be no different than when I'm doing increased layer, that all this stuff goes straight up, goes like that. Well, really I'm going to do the same thing, just reverse down. And I think it'll give me, oh. it gives me better. Do you see? See, it's the yeah. same thing. Yeah, opposite. But I have been bamboozled into believing that you got to do this. you got to go part, that, everything's the same. But I don't think it works as well as I'd like to. I go back and I fix it, and I never get like really super consistent results. And since I've been doing this these last few weeks, um, I'm liking this. So, careful what you hear out there. You're going to hear a lot of things about how you should or should not cut hair. Um, truthfully, if the, what you're listening to can be translated into a direct form, cut this way, get that form, you're probably being told good information. If you're being told that it's artistic and that it's all wonderful and you just got to 
You know, this is a great little technique for you to use, and you're shifting and over directing, and you're doing all that stuff, and they're not talking about the end result and the form of it. You're probably not being told as correct of information as you might like. And then you struggle, and I know I have, because over the years I've taken all this information, I try it, and then I struggle, and it doesn't come out, well, and my head has taken 45 you minutes. Hmm? You, know, you can't reproduce it either. Right. You know? Right. So what I've just shared with you, you can reproduce any haircut that you see anywhere as long as you understand the texture and the different densities of hair and you know you do the, the, your hairdresser thing that you understand the hair, right? So you've got your existing stuff, remember back here, right here, your existing factors. If you understand your existing factors, you use all the different haircut techniques to control your weight distribution, you will control the outcome of every haircut. Okay? So, let's do some short hair. <laughs>